flow that nobody can hear. Yeah. Anna, welcome back. Thank you. I, uh, I, didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to come back and say hi to you last week. I met you. I think I was up to my yin yangs and alligators. <laughs> I overheard that you had a whole bunch of other stuff going on once you once you got back from Arizona. Oh, yes, I had. I had the sun in Michigan.
too, Kenneth. Yeah. How, How are, are you feeling? I can. You doing okay? Oh. Uh, after I just felt your hand, so I must be feeling it.
Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As always, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for everything that He gives us through Jesus Christ. Uh, today we celebrate <clears throat> in the Christian Church the Holy Trinity. Uh, our service uh, is with this theme, the Holy Trinity, and will be as spoken responsibly. Uh, again, during this time of the year, once a year, we read the Athanasian Creed. So it's going to be speaking responsibly. So just keep that in mind. And if if you, you're going to be standing, but if you would like to sit, that's okay. Okay, so if you feel tired being like that, because it's a bit longer compared with the Nicene Creed and the Apostle Creed. Um, a few announcements before we begin our service this morning. Um, just keep that in mind that we have a congressional meeting today at, at Faith after the service, probably around 12.30. So if you are able to, to attend, it would be wonderful so to take decisions that concern not only faith, but as well grace. So if you raise your voice, you speak about that, and, and well, you, you, the decisions will be taken by you as well as members here at, at Grace. Um, remember Strawberry Socials that we will organize, we are, we are planning to organize on July 15th. If you are able to, to help in organizing this event, please speak with the big group, I can just put you there. Uh, or send me an email to me and then I will contact those members who are, are working more to me with this activity. That's wonderful <coughs> for all of us. And um, Bible study this coming uh, Thursday here. This is going to be the last one before summer time. So we are inviting everybody to come and to continue studying the theme prophecy. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of lunch, <coughs> something like that. So, so if you would like to bring a dish or a beverage, so that would be wonderful. We are going to share it. In order to have a well, Bible study, nurture ourselves, our spirit, and as well our body. So that's wonderful. Um, coffee hours at Grace, remember during when we don't have Holy Communion, and for next, we have communion today, we don't have coffee, but for next Sunday, Lorne and Sue Campbell will, will be hosting the coffee. So remember to stay and coffee and conversation. Uh, for a uh, flower for the altar, if you would like to provide flowers for the altar, please sign up on the flower chart that is in the back. Um, for this week, we have elders meeting uh, at Faith at 7 p.m. on Monday, and we have already mentioned Bible study here at the Grace at 10 a.m. And finally, I want to thank all those serving in God's house today. Thanks for your help, for doing possible, making possible that that we worship with the Lord, uh, acolytes, and as well, great as play and, and, and ushers as well, and others who might be helping this morning. Wonderful. So let us uh, worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and let us begin at this moment uh, sharing the peace of the Lord to one another. begin our service with our opening hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear.
We, <clears throat> we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. By this we know that we abide in Him, and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Beloved of God, let us confess together that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that daily we have sinned against our gracious God and deserve His punishment now and eternally. We have not fully nurtured and cared for the handiwork of God the Creator. We have not given Jesus our Savior the full Lordship of our lives. We have not fully followed the promptings and leading of the Holy Spirit. We have not always honored the strong name of the Trinity in thought, word, and deed. Let us confess our sins to God. Um, Almighty God, God, we, we repent of our, our sins and seek your mercy. mercy. Be gracious to us and for the sake of Jesus, Jesus our Redeemer. Redeemer. Grant, Grant us your forgiveness, so that in us, your Redeemer people, we may find the joy of our salvation, and with our hearts renew by the Spirit, serve you in time and in journey. In thy stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Android, which is Psalms 16, a few verses from that chapter. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him, because He has shown His mercy to us. I have said the Lord always before me, because He is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You may know to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory, Glory be to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him, because He has shown His mercy to us. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. You may be seated, we continue with the hymn of praise.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend <coughs> us from all adversities. For you, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This morning, the Old Testament reading is Genesis 1, chapter 1, right back to page 1, we, we, we're reminded how it all began. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness <coughs> called night. And there was evening. And there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening. And there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry earth, the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called all seas. And God saw that it was good. <coughs> and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which there is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which, there, which is their seed each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light up the, to the the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give them light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening. And there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their, according to their kinds. And every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. 
And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over all the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree that seeds of its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to, every, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has a breath of life, I, give, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. <laughs> And all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, God rested from his work. And he had done in creation. And these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle lesson is Acts 2, um, 14 and 8, to chapters uh, 22 to 36. This is the sermon of Peter at Pentecost. <coughs> Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. <coughs> works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always be he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness in your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had his sworn with an oath to him that he would <coughs> set one of his descendants on the throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he did not abandon, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did he did see his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Holy Gospel according to San 
Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus gave his great command to the disciples, and this is going to be the text for our sermon this morning. Please rise and do the gospel. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, the mountain to which Jesus had erected them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. We continue with the Athanasian Creed and we speak it responsibly. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. The Catholic faith is this. That we, we worship one God, God in Trinity, and Trinity, and Trinity, Trinity, and Trinity, neither in terms of the reason for a person, nor of the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the God, God and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit is one, the Lord and the Holy Spirit, the Majesty of the Eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three in the uncreated, or three in the but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord. The Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Yet yeah, yeah, there are not three, three lords, lords, but one, one Lord. Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that, that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit, Spirit is the Father and the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but is proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in the Trinity, none is more after another. None is greater and less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity, and unity in Trinity, is to be worshipped. Therefore, Lord, whoever desires to be saved, must be in the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is my own faith that we believe and confess the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and He is man born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. 
although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One, one altogether, not by one confusion of substance, but by unity, unity of the person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again two days from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies, and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the path of faith. Whoever does not believe in faith and me cannot be saved. You may be seated. We continue with the ceremony. minds of some. 
we see here the evidence of human weakness in the form of doubt. It is for this reason that while Jesus has done his work of redemption through his life, suffering, and death, and having sealed the gospel with his glorious resurrection, he also promises the Counselor who will work on hearts and remove doubt. It is this Holy Spirit which we be at work in and through the word of Christ. They doubted because they live in the world and saw Jesus through worldly eyes and thought with worldly brains. Christ had returned from the dead with a glorified heavenly body. The flesh cannot comprehend this. Now Jesus gives them the command that they too are to go out and make disciples. Christ's disciples are established by Christ's authority. They are made through baptism. Then they are taught to observe and obey all God's commands. Jesus Christ is God. He has authority over heaven and earth. The authority is His by divine right because He is the one who has redeemed all by His sacrificial death and seal with the tomb when the tomb was proven to have no power over him when he rose three days later. In our text then, he comes to, his, to the disciples, to his disciples, with that authority and gives it to them by sending them out to make disciples. What does it take to make a disciple? First, we should understand that a disciple is simply a student of or a follower of Jesus Christ. According to religious thought, this text is the great commission that you and I are sent out to make disciples. It is interesting to view our text in this matter, for indeed we are sent out to bring the message of Jesus Christ to others. But are we the ones making disciples? Or are we the vehicles which God uses to do His work? And He makes disciples. Today, Trinity Sunday, we celebrate one God in three persons. We see our God name by Jesus in our gospel lesson, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. More than that, in our text, we see how God has been and always will be at work in the world. Out of love, the Father created the world. The heavens and earth were brought into being through but a word. It is the Father who sustains His creation, providing all that we need to support this body and life for His love endures forever. Mm. Out of love, the Father sent His Son to redeem the world. God did not desire to receive anything in return for the sending of His Son. Out of love, God sent the Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to accomplish that which man could not accomplish for himself and gain eternal life with God in heaven. He purchased forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation with his own precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. That you and I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom. It is for this reason that, naturally, all authority in heaven and earth 
has been given to Christ. For heaven and earth are reconciled in his own flesh. <coughs> Out of love, the Father sends the Spirit through the Son to make the world holy. It is through the gospel that the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth. It is through the Spirit that this church is kept in Jesus Christ in the true faith. This, dear friends, is how disciples are made. The gospel, the good news, has to go out into the world. So that through that gospel, the Holy Spirit will have free course to do his work. And so Jesus sent the apostles out with the gospel, with his promise. Very important for us to keep that in mind and never forget. He told them, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He is the word of baptism. He is the word they teach. He is the word they are to obey. He is the word with them always. They and us are tempted to doubt. Can I really do this task? Can I really make disciples? Can I really change people? This doubting sometimes takes the form of people attempting to accomplish God's task by using other methods that, than what Jesus commands. For example, there are some in the church who believe that we need to be modern and up to date in many areas, areas or people will not come to Christ. Many believe that we must use the things we have learned in the marketing world to make disciples. <clears throat> There are those who believe that we can learn better techniques to make the Church of Jesus Christ grow. If only we can get with the times and do what other churches are already doing, our church will also grow, they say. How are disciples made? What did Jesus say? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know, there are so many out there who tell us, if you do this kind of worship, they will come. <laughs> if you have this special program, your church will grow. If you preach this way, people will join your church. If you follow these 10 steps, you will have a successful church. I know that these believers have the best intentions in bringing the gospel to others. They love the Lord and they want the church to grow. But you know what? We need to look at our text. But the disciples, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. Some of the eleven that walked with Jesus while he preached, taught, and healed while walking the earth, doubted. Is it any wonder that today there are still those who doubt? Their doubting is made evident by their felt need to add these extras to Christ's command to baptize and teach, or the church will not grow. I am also tempted to doubt. I want a full church. I want everybody in Bible study. I want to have everybody's full attention while the service is taking place. <coughs> and so, I am tempted to try anything to make Christ's church grow. And then I remember, it is Christ's church. The church belongs to Christ. It is Christ's church 
and he has already given me the tools to use by which he will grow his church. I cannot grow Christ's church. No pastor can. No programs can build Christ's church. No new techniques can build Christ's church, despite the promises made by those trying to sell their ideas. It is only God who can build His church, for it is only the Holy Spirit coming through the Son, sent by the Father, who calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth. And the Spirit is at work only through the Gospel. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot believe. We do not even want to believe. It is the Holy Spirit who takes the wonderful Word of God and the blessed sacraments He has given to His Church and makes these things come alive for us with their assurance of forgiveness, life, and salvation. He is the one who makes us aware of sin's evil power over us and who moves sinners to repentance as we come and seek the forgiveness and grace that Christ has earned for us. The Spirit takes our stone, cold, unbelieving hearts and who brings life into us by giving us faith and trust in God's grace alone for our life and salvation. It is the Spirit who empowers and equips us for our life as the people of God. Jesus tells the disciples what to do, baptize and teach. He instructs them to baptize and teach with a very special reminder, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Baptism and teaching make disciples? It sounds too simple. We doubt, thinking that that there needs to be more that we have to do. Dear friends in Christ, let us quit doubting. Let us quit thinking with worldly brains. Christ has promised that He would be with us always and that these are the means that He has commanded us to use to make disciples. Baptism. Simple water only. No, but water and with God's word and comprehended by Christ's command. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The sinner is buried with Christ into his death and raised with him in his resurrection to live a new life. Baptism is no simple one-time act. Baptism is the daily life of the disciple. It is the Spirit who moves the disciples of Christ to put their sinful flesh to death in Christ on a daily basis, in contrition and repentance. It is the Spirit who sanctifies the disciples with the new life of faith that emerges in their daily walk with Christ, trusting the resurrection promise of Christ. In today's gospel, Jesus gives a special authority to his church. He gives her the authority to place the very name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit unto those whom he saves. This is baptism. Just as a bride received the name of her husband in marriage, so also the Christians receive the name of his Savior in baptism. Through baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit who works forgiveness, life, and salvation in us. Along with holy baptism, Jesus instructs the church to carry on the revelation of God by teaching all that Jesus has given us to teach. True disciples of Jesus will have a hunger to learn more and more about Jesus. Therefore, they will have a hunger for God's Word. Jesus instructs the church to satisfy this hunger by teaching all that he has given in his word. Of course, there is no simple teaching. 
where what Christ commanded to obey is concerned. Wherever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, there he is in the midst of them always to the very end of the age. Where Christ is present in the world being taught, miraculous things take place. Sins are forgiven, doubts removed, eternal life granted, salvation is bestowed, and faith is strengthened for the believer's daily walk of life. To summarize, how can you make disciples? First, you are made disciples through water and the Word, strengthened by Christ's presence as your doubts are removed. He builds you up with His presence at the very end of the age. Secondly, having faith strengthened, you trust Him to do as He promised and you follow in His commands. You obey Him, trusting His word of promise, believing that you are His redeemed children, that you are forgiven. You obey Him further by taking His word to others, to those that, that you are in contact in your daily life. Finally, you live in His promise. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus Christ is with you, making you His disciples, and making disciples through you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to His name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue collecting the offering, and we sing the hymn, Christ is surely coming. Bride. 
Lord, you mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty Father, as the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep, you uttered your word, and the world was created. In the waters of holy baptism, you have spoken our names and declared us righteous. You have drawn us to Jesus, the light of life, and save us. Let his light now shine through us, that others may see our good works and give glory to you. Lord, Amen. your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your abiding presence in all times of life, especially in our homes by your word. Especially, we pray for Rainer and Marianne, for Ritva, for Risto and Marcus, and for, for Jean and Anna. Protect them from all harm and danger. Lead broken families to confess their wrongs to you and to each other, and then to forgive each other as in Christ you forgave them. We pray to you, O Lord, for those in our congregation who celebrate their birthdays this week. Here at Grace, we remember Oscar Jr. That you, O Lord, sustain his life and his heart, be content with all your goodness. And we all thank you for everything you give us. Be with the elderly as they cope with physical limitations and weaknesses. Give them a spiritual strength to, cl to cling to your mercies, which are new every morning. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. In government and law, Father, you work to you work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak and fostering godly virtue. Bless the leaders of our nations and guide them in creating laws according to your word. As well, be with all those who make, who make, administer, and judge our laws. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces, aid us in the emergency medical fields, or inform us. Hinder those who oppress any people with mistruth, violence, or fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty Father, as you continue to uphold your creation, be with us as, as we still suffer under the curse of sin. By your will, grant healing to the sick, comfort to the lonely, relief to those whose hearts are he heavy with grief, and aid to those who are in any need. Especially, we pray for Susan, for Dorothy, for Jane and Anna, for Francis, for Anne and Mike, for Ryan and Marianne, for Mary, for Ritva, for Marcus and Risto, for Lisette and family, for Barbara, for Geraldine, for Marge, for Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, and for Pastor Ron. As well, we pray for the members of faith in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations, and for those whom we name in our hearts and minds. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, in the blessed sacrament, your Son gives his body as the bread of heaven and his blood as the cup of salvation. Help us to receive this blessed sacrament with faith and show forth the fruits of the Spirit in lives of faith, repentance, and goodness. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. The Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you. And God, 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 God be also with you. Lift up your hearts in praise. We lift them, them to the one, one true God. God. Give thanks to the Lord our God. To you so fitting and good. In 
Indeed, it is good to give thanks to you, Holy Father, at all times and places, and to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and to you, Holy Spirit. You have revealed yourself to us as the one true God in three persons, and we worship your majesty and glory. Therefore, with all who gather to worship you around your heavenly throne, we join our praises in their unending hymn. of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us a full taste of the feast to come at the table of the Lord. Strengthen us with the blessed gift we have received and grant that we faithfully respond to the workings of the Spirit in us. Grant that we graciously carry out the great commission given us by our Lord Jesus Christ as we await that time when we come at last to that heavenly banquet in your kingdom where joy knows no ending. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Of closing him, Jesus shall reign. from the University of Windsor, 
and has taken a position in Strasbourg, but he's going to be for three temporary for three months, just a probatory, something like that. But if everything goes well, so he's going to bring his family, yeah, wife and two kids, two children, and they would like to come here at, at, at Grace. So it says, well, Pastor uh, uh, Robert Barby uh, told him, well, it says small community and everything. He said, well, I like it small, so it's, it's okay. So look like that he's going to come here, but he's looking for a place to stay. If you are able to, I don't know, to rent a place, a room or something, because he's going to be here for three months, but if everything goes well, it's going to be his family to, to here, and he's going to be looking for a place where to live with his family. So if this is for a temporary measure, something like that. If you know somebody, or you by yourself are able, able to rent a, a room, please let us know. Let me know, or speak with the elders, that they are here, they know now the situation, if, you, if anything. So that would be wonderful. And he's going to start working on Monday, June 19th. So it's very, you need to do that as uh, soon as possible. If you know somebody who could help, or you by yourself, so please speak with me or with the elders, and we will talk with that person. His name is um, Shawali, but he goes by the name Sam. So... Anyway, so English name. So anyway, so so they might be coming here. So if you who could help in something, so let us know. Okay. So have a blessed day. Take care of yourself and hope that you are able to to attend the uh, congregation meeting at the twelve thirty or So God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord. Thank you.